Welcome everybody to a game called Daddy Lies by Studio Senpai. Currently in development. This is the demo of their game. Available on itch.io. Links in the description and all that fun stuff. So let's get right into it. I thought this was actually a pretty interesting premise. Um, we don't see it too often in visual novels and you'll understand why when I start. Is everyone ready? Are you, are you ready? If you're not ready, I can wait. Okay. As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. Ready. Red leader standing by. Let's get this over with already. Welcome to Daddy Lies Patreon exclusive demo. I'm not actually on their Patreon. I assume they just released this for everybody. This is a sneak peek at the first chapter of Daddy Lies, the first visual novel ever produced by Studio Senpai. They've been working on this for an entire year and there sure has sure as hell been some hiccups along the way, but they're really proud of how much they've accomplished so far. Though that is not to say that this will be exactly like the finished game. Some art is yet to be completed, so there are a couple of placeholder images for unimportant locations. And there is always the possibility of some scenes being changed down the road, you know. That's how it goes, you know, not it's not final. This is the first the very first demo is really just to sort of show you how much progress they've made and to give you an idea of what to expect in the final game. Still, we really hope that you enjoy it. I do too. At first though, we gotta talk about something kind of important. Yeah, because this game is not gonna be your cute little romance story with a couple of cute guys and their daughter. While the demo is safe, the final game will touch on a number of troubling topics. Those who choose to play it should expect content regarding sexual assault. Wait, can we just clarify that I'm not the jackass in the story? People are gonna think I'm beating you and shit. Thing, I'm, okay. Oh heavens no. Kolo is a good man, but poverty, domestic abuse, sexual assault, drug usage, anxiety disorders, internalized ableism, depression, and even suicide are all topics that this story touches on. Please just know your limits and take care of yourself. Okay. Now with that out of the way, please feel free to send your thoughts about the demo to Studio Senpai. You can direct message them on Twitter at Studio Senpai, which you cannot do by the way. I just checked. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. I think I've tried. Let me double check just to make sure. Whoops. If Twitter would work. I don't know why it's doing this. Yeah, it doesn't want to work for me. Whatever. I, I think I did try to DM them, but I was unable to. I mean, it, maybe it's changed. Maybe I just missed it. It doesn't really matter. But they have an email right there. Studio.senpai.games at gmail.com. I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of the font. Makes it kind of hard to read sometimes. Maybe I'll get used to it. Same goes for viewers who want to put their put it on the list for review codes when the game launches, which I might actually do. Otherwise, please have a lovely day. We hope that you enjoy our little demo. All right. Well, now that that's out of the way, five minutes of that is probably enough. Finn slammed the door into the small fridge, shut his free hand already swinging down to his waist to snatch up the used bottle opener from or dangled from his belt. The sharp hiss of the pressure being released from the bottle proceeded to the crunch of the metal cap popping away to bounce along the rubber mat. Faintly, the sound of clinking could be heard when it cleared the edge of the mat to skitter under the bar. He had no mind and slid the beer across the lacquered wood into the waiting hand of a man he had only hardly recognized who slapped a fistful of bills onto the bar before pushing back through the throng of people behind him. And was already moving on to the next person, not even bothering to wipe his palm of his of the condensation that clung to his skin. What met him was a pair of red painted lips which were stretched into a suggestive smile and hooded eyes ringed in eyeliner. The woman asked for a martini lemon drop, but her voice was so obviously lowered to be some kind of alluring pure pure purr, sorry. That it was nearly lost to whatever dubstep remix was pouring from the mounted speakers and loud, heavy thrums. Finn wanted to sigh, but instead chose to smile back. Being a dick to the straight girl wasn't going to get him a tip. You know, catch more flies with 
Honey, then with vinegar, as they say. He did, however, pointedly ignore the way her lips swayed back and forth in time with the beat as he thrust the chilled metal scoop into the vat of ice, dumping it into a shaker before reaching for the bottle of Grey Goose that was tucked into the speed rail. By the way, her smile faltered when he asked if she had had a tab open already. It was clear she had been banking on her allure, getting her a free first drink. Uh, that's not going to work on me. Pro tip, if you want to get a drink on the house, try to get it from someone that actually thinks they might benefit off of it. Don't go to a damn gay bar and try to use your wiles on the bartender. A frown etched itself into his features when the smell of cigarette smoke wafted over from somewhere. There were too many people for Finn to figure out where it was coming from. and There were plenty of other smokers scattered throughout the bar, but it was close enough for the acid smoke to burn his acrid smoke sorry to burn his eyes thankfully there was enough of a lull or as much of a lull as you can get on a saturday night for him to find an excuse to escape the front bar for a moment he patted his co-worker on the shoulder while picking up the bus spin from the floor and ducked under the countertop door i'll be back despite there being a perfectly good corner of the bar top with the rubber mats waiting for empty glasses the vast majority of the patrons left dishes scattered throughout the bar on random tables when they were finished. Finn lithely wove through the crowd that danced and bumped and writhed through the catchy beat, most of them with drinks in their hands. Lights of varying hues of blues and purples danced over the bar patrons, which would probably make for a rather intriguing sight if the entire left side of Finn's skull wasn't painfully throbbing with every pulse of the bass. He made a quick work of collecting the various shot highball and martini glasses using a rag that was dra draped over the edge of the bin to wipe away any sweat rings before they had the chance to stain the wood. When he returned to the front bar to tuck the bin under the counter with the mind to take care of them later, Emily flashed him an apologetic smile and asked, Hey, can you wash those off? Oh, look at Emily's a cutie. Look at that. We're kind of starting to run low up here. Finn had to fight the urge to groan, instead turning his back to his co-worker to hide his grimace. Sure, no problem. Washing dishes on a normal night wasn't something Finn minded, it was simply part of the job. He shook up a bunch of sugar and poison and dumped them in the glasses and <laughs> cleaned those glasses before he left. Boy, when you think of it that way, it's kind of funny. Another glass of poison, sir? But dishwashing was always something done after the bar closed. How the hell did they already run out of clean glasses when it was only 11? They didn't even run out of clean dishes on New Year's Eve, and they had at least double the amount of people ordering drinks until the ball dropped. I don't get it. This is placeholder art. Shouldering the swinging door open to the kitchen area, Finn instantly understood what had gone wrong. Dozens of glasses were stacked on top of one another on the flat metal surface of the counter, all very clearly from the Friday crowd. One of the sinks was filled with water that when he dropped his fingertip in and felt the coolness float around his skin, he realized it was also from last night. Upon closer inspection, he could see that several of the glasses had a thin film coating the inside while the remains of cocktails cooked into a congealed mess at the bottom. A long, slow sigh passed through his lips. It wasn't so much that he was angry, he was just exhausted. Once the bin full of dirty dishes was shoved up against the mountain of others, Finn reached into his pocket to fish out his phone, snapped a quick photo, and sent it to the new bartender that worked Fridays and would have been in charge of dishwashing if he ever did his goddamn job. I will create a checklist for you if needed before you clock out. It may have been a tad passive-aggressive, but Finn was just way too tired to pretend like this was not a problem. This would take at least half an hour to get through thanks to the dried residue crusted along the inside of the glasses. In a half hour absence during bar prime time was a lot of tips to miss out on. These people survive on their tips. Like at least two packs of diapers worth of tips. That's a lot of tips. I don't know if you know how, di how expensive diapers are, but they can get pretty costly. Still, he carefully and diligently scrubbed the soap around each glass, making sure not to miss any flecks of salt or smudges of wine stains. The glasses with the most residue caked into the edges were placed in the water to soak. Well, he worked on the others to make the most of his time. 
but there were still a handful that required a little more elbow grease to get them completely clean. It didn't help his mood to discover that whatever had been blue sanitizing fluid they'd been used stung at the burn on his hand from working the cafe bar. Oh my god, thank you so much. When Finn finally returned to the bar, Emily quickly scurried over to help him unload the tray of glasses. I was about to start using plastic cups for my car. I'm sure that violates some kind of health code. Finn's voice was nearly patronizing. Nearly. Hey, can I get a Moscow mule? Yes, of course. Finn, much to his chagrin, failed to take into consideration how closely he had to crouch next to the bar in order to slide the glasses onto the shelf. As a result, when he stood up to greet the customer, he bashed his skull into the edge of the countertop hard enough for his vision to go white. He was not proud of the stream of profanity that followed. Oh my god, Finn, are you okay? Finn slammed the highball into the rubber mat and leaned forward, clutching his head with one hand while pillowing it in the forearm he rested against the bar. Emily set a hand on the middle of his back. It was like very likely meant to be comforting, but some sort of primal instinct to protect himself kicked in and he flinched away with an agitated hiss. That instinct twisted and pulled the muscle group over his flank enough for it to spasm, and he quickly reached back to apply pressure with his fingertips to coax them into relaxing, grasp, sorry, gasping through the unpleasant sensation. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fine. Finn's words were forced out through clenched teeth, which ground together as he struggled to center himself. Faintly, through the ringing in his ears, he could hear a familiar voice approach. What happened? Crap. He bonked his head trying to take an order. I am fine. Why is he holding his side? Emily shifted her weight to her other foot with a guilty frown. I think I spooked him trying to touch him. Erica waved towards the front of the bar where the same patron from before was still dawdling about looking every bit uncomfortable. You go take care of him. Let me handle this. Emily gave him one last wistful look before grabbing a ginger beer from the fridge and returning to the bar. Finn pushed himself away from the counter. Blinking rapidly as if it would keep his vision from swirling. I will be alright. Go home, Finn. What? No, I need the money. Erica sighed and leaned against the bar. Finn, I saw you trip and drop a bottle of gin earlier, and you've been a guzzling coffee all night. You're dead on your feet. Go home. Get some rest before you hurt someone else and get a lawsuit dropped in my lap. Finn's hands curled into tight fists, his nails biting into the textured skin of his palms. I need the hours. Missing three hours of pay won't break your bank. Go home. The muscles over his jaw flexed. The hourly wage he got from working wasn't the important part. Finn needed the tips. That's where the real money's at. The prices they charged for drinks weren't high, so customers were always willing to tip a little bit more than they would at other bars in town. The final hours leading up to the last call were when Flynn made most of his money. Flynn. Finn. He couldn't just leave, especially when he already missed out on a half hour of those tips. But this was Erica, and she was the boss, and Finn didn't particularly make a habit of arguing with his bosses. It's not right. There was another uncomfortable silence between them, filled with some kind of remix that did really nothing for the headache that had been made infinitely worse by the impact against the counter. Finally... Finn released a sigh of resignation. All right. Erica offered what she probably thought was a kind of somewhat pitying smile. It looked more like the sneer of a cartoon lion would wear before devouring its food. Drive safe. Finn grit his teeth and kept his face turned down towards the floor as he pushed past his boss to make a beeline for the staff room, not wanting to coo everyone in on just how distraught he felt at the idea of having to leave just a few hours into his shift. Through the irritation and underlying worry he felt, Finn knew that it would be best for him to go home. Exhaustion was already making him careless, which would make him a work hazard. Hell, he already was. It also lo lowered his work performance, with two patrons having already come up to the bar to ask Emma if she could fix cocktails that Finn had made. From an employee's perspective, it was better to send him home than to have him screwing around on the floor. Generally, didn't make him any less upset about it, though. I know I'd be upset. The drive home wasn't any less unpleasant, at least for Finn's mood. 
There were two wrecks on the interstate that forced traffic to come to a complete halt. I hate when that happens. The city of Fire in his car decided that it wasn't going to read anything he put into it. Kind of like my DVD player on my computer. By the time he pulled into the parking lot of his apartment complex, he was ready to spit fire at anyone who delayed him for even a moment longer. The pungent odor of mold and mildew barely registered with him as he trudged down the hallway, hardly noticing the various stains and scuffs that littered the walls. It took three tries and a quick jiggle of the knob to finally get the door to his apartment open. It looked like his landlord still hadn't replaced the locks like Finn had asked. As soon as it was open, however, Finn was immediately greeted by the warm scent of lavender? Hmm, I'm pretty sure I prefer vanilla. Finn, is that you, dear? Finn towed off his sneakers at the door and nudged them off to the side. Have you lit a candle? From around the corner, a slight older woman appeared with a small child in her arms. I'm afraid I've been having some trouble getting her to sleep, so I tried burning some of my incense to help her fall asleep. I hope you don't mind. Finn shook his head but frowned, taking the shower that was being passed to him. She's still awake? Carefully cradling her to his chest with one arm, Finn brought a hand down to touch the flat bottom of Ava's foot. She didn't feel feverish, so she wasn't sick. Across the living room, Shirley picked up a small pack of tissues from the coffee table and tucked them away into her purse. I wouldn't worry too much. All three of my babies would get restless when Gerald and I weren't around for bedtime. As if on cue, Ava adjusted herself in Finn's hole so that she could nuzzle his neck with a silent yawn. Aww. Shirley smiled sweetly and walked across the living room, stopping just long enough to rub gentle circles into her back. When he was sure she wouldn't take note of it, he tucked a ten dollar bill in her purse. Aw, that was nice of him. Well, I'll get out of your hair. If you need me for anything else, you know where I'll be. Thank you so much for your help, Shirley. Have a lovely evening. Once the door was locked, Finn moved back to the living room, or rather the one part of the room that wasn't his kitchen, and sank into the sofa with a long, heavy sigh. He sat in silence for several minutes. The soft sounds and subtle rocking of Ava's breathing helped him unwind. Every now and then she would wriggle around in his arms to get more comfortable, and each time Finn could only focus on how soft her cheeks felt against his own, which must have a patchy five o'clock shadow by this point. He nuzzled his nose into the side of her head. Ava's hair was also always so smooth and silky, like a thousand down feathers brushing alongside his skin, and she always smelled so clean. Finn's eyes sl slipped shut, and he cradled her closer to his chest. A familiar calm fluttered over his chest, relaxing the tension to his shoulders and expelling any remnants of the agitation he felt from earlier. He leisurely kissed her hair, her temple, every part of her that his lips could reach in their current position. Daddy loves you so much, baby. By the time the ticking wall clock struck 1 a.m., they were both fast asleep. That's a cute kid, right? Very adorable. If Finn were to ask, if, uh, sorry, if Finn were asked to name a skill he had picked up since Ava's birth, he probably would explain how he had learned to accomplish several tasks while moving very, very quietly. Carefully, as not to cause him to bounce and make any unnecessary noise, he slid the closet door shut to muffle the low humming that came from the dryer. A small basket of clean clothes was tucked against his hip with a free hand while he carried over to the living room to deal with in a moment. First, Finn needed to plan something for dinner, which he imagined would be significantly easier if, when he opened the fridge door, there was actually, you know, food. Well, there was a lot of empty space between items, but the shelves weren't entirely bare. Half-empty carton of strawberries, milk, some bean sprouts, a sealed pack of firm tofu, carrots, and then straightened up to swing open the freezer door. Maybe a third of a bag of peas. Well, peas and carrots were sort of a staple for kids' meals, right? You could do something without that, with that and the tofu. Damn it! How did he forget to go grocery shopping? Probably because Finn spent the entirety of the day before cleaning the apartment from top to bottom. But it started out with just him cleaning up the disaster that was his coffee table when he introduced Ava to finger painting. But it quickly escalated to him scrubbing the bathtub with bleach and wiping grease stains from the walls behind the stove. Which Finn was pretty sure was a relic from the 50s. He pulled the peas out of the freezer and dropped them into the sink, thawing you know, before reaching into the refrigerator for the tofu. 
Mm, okay, this wasn't a complete train wreck. Finn would have to load Ava up in the car and head to the grocery store after they ate, but he could work with what, he could work with what he had for now. No biggie. We got this. The muted sound of his phone cut his thoughts short just as he managed to peel back the thin plastic cover. He stared in confusion at the wall in front of him. Where was that coming from? It was hiccuping moans answered his question for him. Finn dropped the container into the sink, quickly grasping at the nearby dish towel to dry his hands at the tofu water that had gotten onto his hands while trying to drain the package before rushing over to Ava's closed bedroom door. She was sitting upright in her bed, sheets pulled around her hips. One hand was clutching the corner of her blanket, the other reaching out for Finn, grasping at the air between them as her moans of disapproval for being woken up turned into wailing. I know, darling, I know. Finn snatched his phone off of her nightstand and kneeled down next to her bed as she crooned. As he crooned, sorry. I know, I know Daddy is so sorry that I woke you up. Ava twisted around in her bed to all but fall into his shoulder, so he wrapped one arm around her waist while his free hand accepted the call. Hello, this better be important. Look, she's so mad. <laughs> Aww. Oh, damn. Finn rolled his eyes. Yes, oh damn. Do you need something? It took a fair amount of self-control to not allow his exasperation to leak into his voice as he rose to his feet, with his daughter cradled to his chest. Oh, uh, hey, are you free to come in for the closing shift today? What happened to Piers? On the other end of the line, Rihanna huffed. He called out sick after a collective 12 months of working at the coffee shop together. Finn had managed to crack the code that was the excruciatingly long list of the all-too-frequently encountered excuses Piers gave to get out of a shift he deemed less than desirable. Being sick usually meant that he was hungover from the night before, which was either impressive or sad, depending on the way you looked at it. Sighing, Finn pulled his phone away from his face long enough to glance at the time. Well, the closing shift started at 6, and it was already 4.45. Oh boy, it would be a hell of a rush, and this was supposed to be his day off. But we we gotta pay bills, man. Right? I mean, oh man, we could spend time with Ava, though. Ah, that'll be fine. Spend time with our, our daughter. Mezzing his cheek against the top of Ava's head, Finn sighed. I can't. I have too much to do at home. There was a threat of apology in his voice. He knew that Rianne ought ride on him to always be available to take on extra shifts. You know, but Finn had to prioritize his time with Ava over work every now and again, you know? Even if it meant losing out on enough pay to cover the cost of diapers for a month. Can I go back? Besides, he was pretty sure that his only two uniform shirts were beyond the point of needing to be washed and smelled absolutely rank because of it. On the other end of the line, he could hear Rihanna sigh, the gust of air quipping the mic and the phone. I am sorry. No, no, it's fine. I'll try Paige. Have a good night, Finn. Calling into that, Finn set the phone down on the nightstand, giving it a regretful stare before turning his attention back to the child that was realizing she was too sleepy to throw much of a tantrum. By this point, she was just mooing and hiccuping out of spite, more interested in cuddling than actually putting any effort in her expression of displeasure over being quickly woken up from her nap. Finn crossed the small room to the glider that sat next to the window, still the best deal he ever happened across on the flea market to date, and he lowered himself into the cushions, careful not to jostle Ava in doing so. Trying to put her directly into bed in a bad mood would just get her riled up as she tried to fight it, so he would spend some time with her until she fell back asleep. If it was lucky, the warmth from the sunlight pouring in from the window would help speed up the process. Rocking back and forth, Finn closed his eyes and stroked her back with the hand, not supporting her bottom. She was getting a little heavier. He noticed her back was a tad longer, too. She's growing up. Finn kissed the top of her down like hair. You're growing up, you. He wanted her to stay tiny forever. All, you know, cute and tiny and wholly dependent on him. Ava's breathing soon evened out, and apparently he also was worn out from the afternoon at the park because it wasn't long before the gentle rhythm of the rocking and the subtle up and down of her chest began to take its toll on Finn. At some point, his eyes closed. 
It was only when the quiet ding of the dryer completing its cycle broke the pleasant silence that they opened again. The room was bathed in orange, and when the fog in his head cleared enough room to find it, the clock read 5.35. Ah, crud. Finn looked down at Ava, who was drooling on his chest in blissful conscious and consciousness. Tiny shadows were cast over her rosy, plump cheeks by the long lashes her daycare teachers always commented on. He hated waking her up. Ava was just so cute when she was asleep. Hell, she was adorable. Literally every moment of the day, maybe less so when she was screeching at 3 in the morning, but there was something about the peaceful way she looked when she was asleep that always made Finn's heart just feel overfull. As if she could feel his gaze on her, Ava made a small noise in her back of her throat just seconds before her eyes opened and she turned her face up to peer at him curiously. They were her mother's her eyes and they were beautiful. Did you sleep well? Ava ignored him and rested her head back on her father's shoulder, readjusting herself to snuggle closer before closing her eyes again to submit to the call of sleep. No, no, Ava. Finn smoothed his hand over the back of her head, his thumb brushing on her feathery hair. Time to wake up. Ava ignored him. Ava. He kept his tone soft and song-like, kissing the top of her head. Daddy has to make dinner. Aren't you getting hungry? That piqued her interest. <laughs> Ava nodded and groggily pushed herself up to properly sit in his lap. Hungry, Daddy. Oh, it's so precious. Well, that settled that. Finn rose from the glider with Ava still in his arms to make his way into the living room, not quite yet ready to settle her down. Ava had other plans, however. Once Finn crouched down to turn on the laptop he had plugged into the modest TV he owned, Ava was slipping out of his hold and waddling over to where her coloring books were tucked away on one of the shelves of the entertainment stand. Uh, sure, okay. Trying not to feel too snubbed, Finn tapped around on the keyboard until the newest episode of Beauty Bible was playing on the television. Thankfully, the coloring book Ava dragged onto the floor was enough to keep her occupied while he dumped the thawed peas into a small pot. Oh, what was it called? A saucepan. Finn honestly didn't know what a saucepan really was now that he thought about it. He turned the bag over to read the cooking instructions. Okay, pour frozen peas into saucepan on medium heat. Easy. Well, crap. Finn eyed the peas, a couple of which were pale and wrinkled from freezer burn. It wasn't like he could have tossed them back into the freezer as late as it was. Eh. Finn plucked the freezer burnt pieces free and chucked them in the nearby trash can. It's probably fine, right? It's probably fine. He retrieved a small bag of baby carrots from the fridge along with the tofu. Proteins, vitamins, calcium, omega-3, fiber, carbs... As he used a dull sentoku knife to chop the baby carrots into medallions small enough for Ava to chew, Finn went through a mental checklist to make sure that all of the nutritional bases were covered, or, well, as many as could be covered given the present situation of lack of food. It would take a while for the carrots to boil until they were soft enough for Ava to chew, so Finn soon left the stove to attend to the laundry. Considering Finn had all of, like, four outfits, the amount of laundry that seemed to always be in need of washing was baffling. I have, like, a million outfits, and I don't know why. I hardly wear that many different kinds of clothes. And yet, I seem to get more every time I look in the laundry. Granted, the machines that came with the apartment were pretty small, but, I mean, how was there enough for four full loads? Ava... Finn pulled a stuffed bear off the top of a very full laundry basket once it was set on the floor next to the coffee table. Look who's all nice and clean. Oh my god, she's so adorable. Ava looked up from her coloring book and shrieked, springing up from where she was seated on her ankles to take the bear from his outstretched hand. Teddy! Maybe next time we won't try to teach him how to finger paint? Thank Christ it was washable paint. Ava would probably have a stroke if that thing ever actually got damaged. Ava had already turned her attention back to the coloring book, though, holding the bear in one hand while her other hand clumsily colored a horse purple. Horses can be purple, sure. Ben watched her with fond amusement as she did her best to keep the crayon with, within the lines like he had been trying to teach her. 
with the majority of the strokes going wayward and leaving the horse's head mo little more than a blob. Still, it was clear that Ava's hand-eye coordination was starting to improve. Pleased, Finn turned his attention back to the show he had put hat. Have they said how old Ava is? I don't think they have yet. The hosts were running a segment on hairstyles for holiday parties. They were cute, but Finn honestly couldn't remember the last party he had attended. Surely it was back in middle school. Co-workers would invite him out for a get-together, though they were usually at places that Finn either couldn't afford or couldn't bring his daughter to. He fast-forwarded through the segment until he landed on something that was relevant to his interests. It wasn't until Ava grumbled incoherently that he looked up from folding the what felt like the five million sock. Ava had pulled her bear into her lap and was shoving a crayon into his hand, paw, awkwardly dragging it over the coloring book. Seeing that her endeavor wasn't producing the results she was anticipating, though, if the way her face was cinched tight was any indication. Ava, are you trying to teach Chidi how to color? She nodded, eyes fixed on the page where a flower was beginning to resemble a sea urchin. That's so adorable. Sorry about the Discord messages. Finn, smiling fondly, pulled his phone out of his pocket to turn the camera on her. Is he doing a good job? This time Ava shook her head. Finn snorted and covered his mouth. Children were so brutal. Maybe he just needs to practice. Are you going to help him get better? I help Teddy color. Snapping a couple more photos, Finn set the phone aside and pulled a familiar onesie out from the laundry for folding. One of the seams seemed to be coming loose. Maybe Teddy just needs to slow down and take his time. If he's patient, he'll be able to color in the lines. Ava leaned to the side to look at the stuffed animal's face, patting its head. Go slow, Teddy. It's so, I know, right? She was so cute. How could you not love that? Grabbed her phone. Sorry, her phone. She doesn't have a phone. He grabbed his phone again for several more pictures before dropping it into the laundry basket and rising a standing position. I hope he doesn't forget about his phone. Can you and Teddy color Daddy a picture when he makes dinner? Ava abruptly held up the coloring book with both hands, catapulting a crayon across the room. She either didn't notice or didn't care, because she was proudly beaming up at him as if she was presenting Simba to the pride. That looks great, baby. Translation, I have no idea what I'm looking at, but those are some colorful blobs right there. It's all about encouragement, you know? You gotta encourage them to express themselves, even if you don't know what you're looking at. That's art right there. The next half hour passed by with a little incident. Ava didn't try to stick a crayon out, knob up her nose or anything. Finn didn't burn the tofu while baking it. And the picture she drew with her teddy bear was... Well, it's a picture she drew by gripping a crayon through a stuffed animal's hand. What do you want, the Mona Lisa? Finn, finishing up the laundry while she ate her dinner from a plastic plate with portion compartments. So by the time she had cleaned her plate, everything was ready to be put away. Ava, would you like to help Daddy put away laundry? For reasons Finn failed to understand, Ava loved helping with household chores almost as much as she loved crawling through the small tunnels at the park with laundry being one of her favorite activities. Well, we locked out on that one, right? She's going to be so helpful when she grows up. She predictably threw her arms up to be let out of her high chair, grinning ear to ear. Andy! Finn wasted no time in lifting her up from her plastic prison, swinging and bouncing her around just to listen to her lap before plopping her down to the laundry basket with her clothes. We're taking off, Ava. Ava giggled and bounced her in the laundry basket, gripping the sides to keep herself stable. As soon as Finn lifted it up, she started to make her version of airplane noises. Which was mostly just her blowing raspberries and getting spittle everywhere. <laughs> Finn joined in, something that was fuck all difficult when he was smiling almost uncontrollably. Daddy, wrong way. Finn snorted and careened away from the front door. You mean this way? He started towards his room. No, no. Ava twisted around in the laundry basket to point towards her bedroom, shrieking, My room! Then bounced the laundry basket as he turned to her open door. The toddler quickly remembered to make her airplane noises lest they crash from the lack of power. That's very important. She leaned into the directions that Finn turned into with help steering, looking quite determined as she did so, which was quite probably the cutest thing he'd ever seen. The whole time, Finn was careful to not let her lean too much and fall out. Okay, time to land. 
the announcement prompted Ava to make a whirring sound, an imitation of the whistling played in cartoons when something was falling. She was still unable to whistle, though, so it was just mostly an extended sigh. Good girl now. Help Daddy put it away. He helped Ava climb out of the laundry basket, smoothing out her hair. Can you show me where your shirts go? Ben couldn't afford to buy proper dresses for the dressers for the rooms, and neither of them had closets, so he had settled on a fabric cubby shelf system to store Ava's clothes in one buying furniture. Now that Ava was getting stronger and developing the cubbies proved to be more useful than he had initially anticipated. Ava paused for a moment, looking thoughtfully at the shelves before carefully pulling one of the polyester drawers free. She stood on her tiptoes to peer into it, then looked at her father questionably. Is that it? Is that where your sits go? I'm sure of herself Ava held it out for him. Finn looked in as if he didn't already know the answer, wanting to build up the moment. Sure enough, there was a single character print shirt at the bottom of the container. That's it! You found it! Ava's triumphant smile was radiant. Oh. She shrieked and stomped her bare feet in excitement, drawer bouncing around. Finn slid the laundry basket around to put it between them. Okay, Ava, now put your yellow shirt in the cubby. Ava frowned at the laundry basket. Can you show Daddy your yellow shirt? The laundry was sorted into three stacks of clothing, with two of those stacks being topped with shirts. The yellow one was right at the top, so all she had to do was pick one of the two. Ava crouched down so that she was squatting in front of the basket with a similar expression to what you would see from one of those characters in action movies that had to defuse a bomb by cutting the blue-red wire. Slowly, she reached out for a blue shirt and picked it up. Finn kept his voice light. No, Ava, that's blue. Show Daddy your yellow shirt. But Ava had revealed the shirt beneath the blue one. There were more options, which was probably confusing her. She whimpered, reaching out for the same shirt. That's blue, baby. Ava held the shirt tight and realized, sorry, and released a telltale moan as her eyes filled up. Oh no, sweetheart, don't cry. You'll get it. You're doing so well, Ava Bear. You're making Daddy so happy. He let his hand fall into the basket, his knuckles grazing the yellow cotton. Just take your time. Where is your yellow shirt? Ava took the bait. Dropping the blue shirt into the basket, she tentatively picked up the correct garment. Good girl, you found your yellow shirt. Ben played up his excitement to keep her from becoming discouraged too early in the game and leaned forward to give her a kiss. Aww. Well, she wasn't as animated as she was the first time, Ava still giggled and put the shirt in the drawer. All right, time for an easy one. Now, where is your blue shirt? Ava got this one almost immediately. She grabbed the earlier choice from the pile, which had been pulled from its neatly folded state by this point. That's it, that's your blue shirt. Ava smiled widened with delight and she bounced in place. What color is that, Ava? Blue. Aww. Finn beamed, pride oozing out from every one of his pores. That's right. He plucked a pair of socks from the laundry basket. Can you tell Daddy what color these are? Pink. Yes, and where do they go? Ava pointed at her feet. Reaching over the basket, Finn swept Ava up in his arms to pepper kisses over her cheeks. Oh, you are so smart. You're so smart, Ava. You know that. You're such a smart girl. Ava squealed and flapped her hands, smacking his head playfully. Daddy's so proud of you. I love you so much. Daddy, Londy. No, Daddy wants to snuggle. Daddy. Jeez. What kind of kid turns down snuggles for chores? My kid, apparently. With a bit more smattering kisses over her face, Finn released her so that they could finish laundry. Ava's newfound confidence meant that the activity proceeded much faster than before. Finn watched with unmatched pride as she successfully located her denim overalls and put them in the proper drawer, sometimes picking up certain articles of clothing and announcing their color without being asked. It was surprising in all the best ways to see her get almost everyone correct, only becoming confused if there was a pattern. Ava insisted on helping with his laundry too as she ran out to the living room to carry his folded clothes to the laundry basket. Most of it fell into a messy pile, but Finn wasn't about to slow a roll by needlessly chastising her for being impatient. It was starting to get late though, so Finn scooped Ava up from where she was pointing at the different colors in his spotted trunks to carry her to the room. He made a quick pit stop to grab her teddy from the foot of the couch. He let her pick out her pajamas before sliding the tiny rubber bands from her hair to shake out her braids. She was already yawning and blurrily blinking at her surroundings by the time she was stripped down to her diaper. 
Poor thing probably used up all her leftover energy from the park on laundry. As important as it was for her to have a set routine, Finn decided that her bath could wait until morning. He didn't want Ava falling asleep in the tub, and it wasn't as if she was sweating much at the park in 30 degree weather. He helped into her pajamas and pulled the, the sheets back so she could crawl into her bed, handing over her teddy bear when she was snuggled in. Finn flicked off the light, but didn't leave the room immediately. Instead, he kneeled behind her bed in the dark. The tip of his finger trailed from her hairline to the tip of her nose, ghosting along her baby's soft skin in a leisurely pace. I love you, Ava Bear. Ava didn't respond to his whisper, already fast asleep. Still kneeling by her side, Finn wasn't far behind. He let the gentle breathing of his daughter lull him to sleep, slouched over her tiny bed. Ava's so adorable. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the goodest boy of them all? The answer was the beautiful golden retriever arriving on the sidewalk next to his owner, who was the lone adult amongst the boisterous group of Girl Scouts. The dog was in the middle of looking as pleased as can be as two of the six kids buried their hands in the shimmering blonde fur on his chest and legs, shaking their fingers to and fro and to make the dog's glossy fur glimmer like strands of gold. Seriously, that dog was absurdly beautiful. Like, you don't even know. Ava did not share his sentiments, unfortunately. Her eyes, slanted with suspicion, were locked on the dog's hands, gripping the shopping basket handle hard enough for her fingers to burn white. It wasn't too unlike how a TSA agent would regard a suspicious bag left at a LaGuardia, honestly. Finn was prepared to ignore the dog and go inside the shop like normal because he wasn't about to force his daughter to face her fears on the fly, but Girl Scouts didn't work outside the grocery stores for nothing. They sell cookies. Would you like to buy some cookies? Thin mints? Preferably? That's all we sell. That's all, we, that's all you need to sell are thin mints. Like a flip being switched, the chorus of high-pitched prepubescent voices jolted at, jolted the dog right out of his relaxed state. He flipped around and sprang to his feet to rush over to the newcomers, panting erratically and swinging his tail back and forth like an off-kilter metronome. The leash tied to the table ache kept him from going too far, but it was enough to send Ava into a panic. A shrill whine peeled up her throat as she leaned away from the dog, never once taking her eyes off what surely was perceived to be a vicious monster. When the retriever hopped in his excitement, she screamed, No! Finn wasn't about to take a crying child into the store, but he didn't want to keep her out there with the dog. He really didn't know what to do, other than drag the cart to his side and lift Ava from the seat to put himself between her and the excitable animal. Daddy! Oh, it's okay. Ava continued to wail in his ears as the troop leader wrangled the yipping dog and to the other side of the table, a vain attempt at hiding the offending beast. Prince, lay down. Down. Ava, it's just a puppy. The puppy just wants to play with you. No, Daddy, no. For as uncomfortable of a situation as this was, Finn felt a sense of satisfaction blooming in his chest when Ava clung to him, hiding her face in the hollow of his shoulder. He tightened his hold around her tiny body, relishing the feeling of being needed. The puppy won't hurt you, baby. He just wants to say hi, see? He turned to the side so Ava could see the dog lying on the ground next to a stack of purple cookie boxes, wagging his tail against the cool cement and trying to army crawl towards them one inch at a time. I'm so sorry, sir. Usually he's better behaved than this. Uh-huh. Ava just happened to be his one trigger. Finn ignored the troop leader and kept his focus on his daughter, who was still crying but no longer screaming bloody murder. Ava, honey, the puppy jumped because he was happy to see you, just like how you always jump up when Daddy comes home from work. Ava moaned, grinding her forehead into his shoulder. No play, no play with the puppy. Okay, you don't have to play with the puppy. Daddy won't let the puppy come near you, okay? Ava wanna, don't want to play with the puppy. You don't have to play with the puppy. Look, Ava, he's staying right there on the ground. He won't jump at you again. Still sniffling, but otherwise calm-ish. Ava finally separated her face from where she had been trying to fuse it into Finn's body through osmosis. She pouted at the dog, who whined and flattened himself against the ground when his owner chastised him for trying to get up. Really, I am so sorry. Here. The lady plucked a familiar yellow boxer from the table and walked over to hand it to Finn as he made his way back to the cart. Finn eyed the box, tempted. On one hand, he really loved lemon-flavored sweets. On the other, a playful dog was hardly worth this much of a fuss. 
After a beat, he waved her off and put Ava back into the shopping cart, making sure her legs went through the seat openings without getting stuck. Oh, that is not necessary. Your dog is hardly the first to frighten her. Are, are you sure? I really do feel bad. Oh, it's fine. Have, you, have yourself a lovely day. The troop leader still looked somewhat dismayed, but Finn wasn't going to budge on this. He wasn't comfortable with receiving handouts. Before she could continue insisting that he take the box of cookies, he pushed the cart into the store with Ava still trying to blow the dog up with her eyes or something. <laughs> Bye, puppy. Aww. Finn snorted, shaking his head. Whatever you say. He fished a handful of coupons that he had brought with them out of his pocket, using one hand to unfold them to see what his shopping list looked like. Bread was discounted, as well as pasta sauce, American cheese, oatmeal. Finn looked up from the assortment of clippings so he could look for any of the sale tags that market would put up on produce that needed to go. There wasn't much from what he could see, which was disappointing. Just baby bell mushrooms, tomato, zucchini. Maybe Finn could try some spin on spaghetti squash for dinner. Hmm. Ava, what do you think about spaghetti for dinner? Strawberries. No, you can't have strawberries for dinner. No, I said... His eyes followed to where Ava was twisting around in her seat to point at. Over with the rest of the fruit was a striking splash of red, what looked like two dozen cartons of strawberries. Heavens, this girl. As he pushed the cart in the direction of the display, Finn wondered if Ava remembered where they were or just saw the bright colors against the yellow of the pineapple chunks. Both, maybe? The need for so many strawberries to be put on display soon made sense to Finn as he approached the fruit section, when the bright yellow buy one get one tag caught his eye. They must be close to their throwout date. Strawberries, Daddy! Finn frowned. How do you ask for things? Can't have strawberries? Politely. How do you politely ask for strawberries? Thank you! Right, how can I say no to that? Finn pressed his wrist to his mouth to suppress a laugh. Ah, eh, close enough. He reached for two cartons of strawberries and checked them for any mold or unsightly bruises. We say please, Ava. May I please have strawberries, Daddy? Ava hesitated. Please have strawberries, Daddy. Thank you. <laughs> this time Finn did a pretty piss poor job of muffling the laugh that burst from his chest. Well, it was a start. She's learning, okay? Grocery shopping, as one would imagine, was relatively uneventful. Ava reached for brightly colored boxes of cereal, whining when they were put back on the shelf. Meanwhile, Finn spent a total of five minutes deciding on what kind of pasta sauce he wanted while well, questioning whether or not he would actually taste the difference between Chunky Garden and Basil Parmesan. In the end, he had Ava choose for him, though he was pretty sure she only picked the Basil Parmesan sauce because it had a predominantly yellow label. When they, when they made their way up to the counter, Finn pulled her out of the seat and let her kneel in the cart itself so she could unload the groceries with him. He made sure to only allow her to pick up items that wouldn't break if they were dropped, like the loaf of bread and box of oatmeal, so he made quick work with transferring the eggs and strawberries onto the black conveyor belt. Your total is 7281. Do you have a member card? Oh, yikes. That's three days of tip money. Finn opened his wallet, only to feel his blood draining from his face. Where was his card? He handed over the coupons to buy himself a bit of time. Where was his store card, and why wasn't it right behind his debit card where it should have been? <sighs> there was no way he could spend this much money on groceries and still have enough left over for gas on the way home. The grocery chain had a partnership with a national gas company that gave card users discounts at their pump, so he really, really needed that card. Finn bit his lip and looked up at the cashier. Can you use my phone number? The cashier's expression turned almost pitying as he shook her head. I'm sorry, our systems is down. Our system is down. We can't search through any of the database right now. Anxiety twisted as inside as he looked for something, anything that might help him in the situation. Of course, there was nothing, but it kept him from meeting his daughter's expecting gaze. He couldn't look at her. He couldn't look at his baby girl while he couldn't even afford to feed her. I have mine on me. Do you want to use it? Finn all but gave himself whiplash when he turned towards the deep voice. A man towering over him held up a shiny black car with the grocery store's logo. He had enough to find muscle mass pushing up against his dark skin for Finn to be pretty sure that his forearm was twice the size of his own. An intricate Polynesian-style tattoo started in a point at the base of his neck and 
covered his right bicep, extending just a few inches past the elbow. Ben could see it crossed over part of his chest too, but the t-shirt stretched tight over his broad chest prevented him from seeing just how far it went. There were also two distinct line tattoos on his left forearm. If one failed to notice the tattoos, it would probably be because their attention was fixed on the rather impressive assortment of piercings in both ears, accompanying the twin piercings in his right eyebrow and the stud that poked out just beneath the swell of his bottom lip. His appearance was overwhelming, but not so overwhelming that it distracted Flynn from what was being offered. It would be a win, a win for them. With Finn getting discounted groceries and the man getting discounted gas, but it still felt wrong to accept it. Look at his daughter. Then the grocery total. Finn could swallow his pride and accept the help, not pay his water bill, or let Ava go hungry until his paycheck from the coffee shop was ready. May I? The man's shoulders bounced with a breathy laugh. Of course, excuse me, princess. He reached around Ava to pass the store card to the cashier. Thank you so much. You do not understand how much this means to me. The man raised an eyebrow but shrugged. No biggie. Finn waited for the cashier to scan the card and hand it back to him as heat flared in his cheeks. He was so embarrassed that he thought he might actually die of shame. What kind of father was he, unable to feed his own child without assistance from a total stranger? Your total is now 4309. Man, we saved a ton of money. Like 30 bucks. Finn mumbled his acknowledgement and handed over 45 in cash. He couldn't let, couldn't get out of the building fast enough. The bagger seemed to take 20 goddamn minutes to load the groceries into the cart, and the cashier fumbled the change and took an entire hour to recover a single dime. Okay, maybe that was a little bit of an exaggeration. Sure. Maybe. By the time he was free to go, Finn was about to jump out of his skin and was more than ready to burn rubber. Hey, you okay? Apparently, his savior had other plans. Finn spun around from the open car door, and lo and fucking behold, the man was unzipping the saddle pouches of a black motorcycle parked next to his conker. What a coincidence. Finn kept his gaze averted and turned back to finish fastening Ava into her car seat. I'm well enough, thanks for asking. You sure, man? You look pretty stressed out there. I was taken by surprise, is all. He closed the door in time to hear another chuckle. He must really hate surprises. I could say that. The loose gravel crunched beneath the soles of his slip on sneakers slip on sneakers as Finn opened the passenger door to start loading the groceries from the cart. When the pack of hemp milk was wait, hemp milk? What is that? The stranger appeared behind him with two white plastic bags in each hand, the sharp corner of a cereal box to string one bag enough for Finn to know that it would tear a hole in the plastic before he would get home. He didn't really care about how difficult that would make climbing several flights of stairs because Finn was more preoccupied with how close this guy was. The steel rod slammed down his spine. The step back gave him an ex no extra space to breathe, only resulting in the shoulder blades protected only by a thin layer of skin and an even thinner jacket jamming painfully to the metal frame of his car. Boy, it was only by the grace of freaking God that the guy didn't make a habit of being a creep. He took a full stride back, which may as well have been an entire ten paces given how long his legs were, and held out the grocery bags, which Finn took gracelessly. Right, sorry. Surprises. It looked like he felt genuinely bad about spooking Finn. While it didn't completely quell the storm of butterflies in his belly, it was nice to know that he wasn't going to try to intimidate him. I'm Kaloa, by the way. Kaloa grabbed another fistful of grocery bag and handed handles and passed them over. You come here often? It was difficult to keep the growing suspicion out of his expression as Finn placed the bag of oatmeal and frozen pancakes on the car floor. Just because Kaloa wasn't intentionally raising red flags didn't mean that they weren't being raised. He by no means would be the first person to demand favors as payment for their kindness, after all. Do you normally rescue men at the register to pick them up in the parking lot? Kaloa blushed and cringed sheepishly. One corner of his mouth pulled higher than the other, and Finn definitely would not make a mental note of how cute it was later. Definitely not. <laughs> Feels that way, doesn't it? But uh, no, I really just am ch checking on you. Thought you were going to pass out right on the floor. Why did he care? Well, I appreciate your concern, but I can assure you I'm fine. Thank you very much for your assistance, both with the store card and with... 
It's cold. Shit. Finn whipped around and, leaning over the passenger seat, jammed the key into the ignition. He cranked the AC dial all the way into the red and clicked the fan speed to middle. I'm sorry, darling. Here, it'll get you warm soon. Is that your daughter? No. Finn closed the door. I'm her nanny. It was a lie that Finn had told so many times. It came so naturally that he had said it without even thinking. Why are we ashamed that she's our daughter? Or that we're her father? I need to get her home. Kolova's face fell only a little. Of course. It was nice meeting you, mister. Finn hesitated, gnawing on his lip. My name's Finn. Given the low odds of there being too many Finnegan Parks in Cincinnati, he wasn't quite comfortable with releasing his full name to someone that had just dropped it. Do you come off in line in a damn parking lot? Drive safe, Finn. Finn remained outside of the car until Kaloa kicked his motorcycle to life with a deafening roar. He watched him peel out of the parking lot, wondering if it was a good or a bad thing that he was already kind of missing that lopsided grin. When he finally dropped into the driver's seat, the worn store card was resting in the cup holder of his center console. Of course. How many times? <laughs> Insufferable wench. Oh boy. How many times do I have to explain this to you? Finn liked to think that raising a child on his own had made him into a patient man, but he was the one fraying every way from braining this lady with the stainless steel mixing cup he was rinsing out. Here, let me show you. The customer reached over the counter to grab a store cup and then produced a permanent marker from a white leather purse that could have paid Finn's bills for an entire month. I want the milk filled to here. She actually marked a bridge on the inside of the cup. What the hell? The ice is to be filled up to here, another dash, and the rest to be filled to here. Finn could only watch in astonishment as the cup was handed back to Piers, who looked every bit as flabbergasted as he did. Don't mix the mocha sauce in the espresso. I wouldn't think of it. Finn snorted delicately behind his wrist. Espresso. Espresso. And I want the hazelnut shots on top. Is that so difficult to ask for? When Piers reached for a different cup, the unbearable woman's eyes practically bulged out of her head as if she were Judge Doom. No, use the cup that I gave you so that you can get it right. I can't. Health codes don't. I don't care about health codes. I care about getting out of here in the next hour. Boy, I'm sure the health inspector would love to hear that one. Finn took a long, slow breath before gently pushing the mixing cup into Pierre's free hand to trade him for the marked coffee cup. Probably because every single bean in the store would look for any reason to not have to interact with the customer, but Pierce took the hint and let himself tap out of the relay. Ma'am, if we use what you have marked, the milk and the agitation from the eyes will result in the marker mixing in your beverage. I will use your cup as a guide, but no respectable barista will serve you a product that may contain trace amounts of carcinogens. It's a permanent marker. It's permanent. It's not going to wash off. That's not how it works. Because this is a needless waste of a cup, this inconveniences our business and the environment just as much as you feel it inconveniences you. Please do not make this into a bigger issue than it needs to be, ma'am. If your coffee is not to your liking after a fourth attempt, then I will take your receipt and issue a refund. It was only after her buggy eyes returned to a less frightening, angry squinting and an irritated huff that the customer finally acquiesced. Finn could actually feel every other person in the room sign a breath of relief. You, you, you know those ones, right? Who just are so insufferable to everyone, it just kind of feels your pain. He made a show of referring back to the woman marked cup every few seconds, once even going so far as to hold the new one up to it for visual comparison. It wasn't as if Finn was actually paying real attention to it, though. All peers did was mess up the milk ratio. There was no doubt in Finn's mind that he could mix the mocha sauce into the espresso and she would have no clue. When he slid the beverage across the counter, the wretched beast didn't so much as take a proper sip before huffing and rolling her eyes. Whatever. The faint whisper of some un uh, rather crude words could be heard from the sink. Oh, she's a cutie. Rianne. At least wait until she's out of the store, dumbass. You really want her coming back? <laughs> right? It's like, I don't want those people to come back. I don't care if I lose their business. They're assholes anyway. 
Swiping a shiny black credit card through the built-in reader, Rianne rolled her eyes and finished ringing the current customer up. You have a rewards card with us? We're currently running a special on. Finn plucked a small cup made for espresso orders up from the counter, noting how rather a long line had formed due to Piers, who moved slowly on bar as it was, having to make some drink three times in a row. Thankfully, the order was just an espresso con panna. Easy peasy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to make coffee drinks. Piers, that cup is clean. Help me with the line. Who do you think you are, my manager? Friendly bump against his shoulder froze every one of Finn's muscles for all of a second. The next order was a blended frappe, and he wasn't as much of a slacker as Rianne gave him hell for. So Piers had already turned his back to him by the time Finn had taken an evasive step to the side. Piers, he did not understand the concept of personal space. Three cappuccinos, two lattes, and a macchiato later, Finn was pleased to find the final cup resting on the counter. The small rush wasn't more than their small crew of three could handle, but Finn's back was beginning to ache unpleasantly from having to bend over so many times for different kinds of milk from the fridge tucked below the bar. It didn't help that Piers had an obsession with putting everything away as soon as anyone was finished with them, so even if two drinks required the same type of milk, Finn had to keep opening the refrigerator when he shouldn't have to. It was only by the grace of the coffee gods that the final order, for now, was just a plain dark roast coffee. Why someone would choose to spend over four dollars on black coffee when they could just buy the beans themselves was a bit beyond him, but whatever. It's, I'm going to tell people how to spend their money. But at least Finn didn't have to spend ten minutes carefully creating some quad extra large half calf bev del foam latte with six precisely measured pumps of different syrups. That's how I like it, personally. Sometimes Finn had to question how the hell anyone came across their preferred beverages. Right? It's like, how do you get to that? Like, no... I found out four pumps just wasn't enough. Six pumps was too many, but five, that was the right amount. I do kind of wonder that. <laughs> I'm with Finn here. K Cole? Dark eyes widened just as smidgen and surprise. Cole? Holy shit, Finn? Storm of butterflies fluttered around his gut when a familiar figure lumbered into view. Hey, how are you? Oh, that smile. I'm well. Truly, an inspired response. That's good. I was worried about you last week, you know. Did you ever find your card? It was in my center console. Oh, um. He slipped a cardboard sleeve out over the coffee and passed it over. Here, your coffee. Finn delightfully did not pay attention to the way his muscles pushed against his uniform shirt when Koloa accepted the beverage. wonder how much time someone had to build at the, spend at the gym to build that much mass. So you work here? Allegedly. Chloe's eyes, so blue they were nearly mesmerizing, glittered beneath the hanging lights overhead. Are we we are straight, right? I'm kinda of doubting Finn here. I assume this means you work around here. The grocery store they met was quite a ways away from the coffee shop, and it would be rather strange for someone to do their grocery shopping so far away from home. Yep, I just got off actually. Figured I'd go get some coffee before going home. We ran out of the good shit at the station. Finn raised an eyebrow, ready to question how one gets off at work at 7 in the morning, but his gaze dropped to the firefighter at over his shoulder. What, well, firefighters work 24-hour shifts, don't they? Finn, go on your break. Wait, what? Finn checked the clock and then peered questioningly at his manager. My break's not until 10. It's like 7 in the morning. If anyone was supposed to go on break, it was Rianne. She was always here at 4 to get the cafe open by 5. Go on your break, Finn. Part of them wanted to protest, but... There was a slow and deliberate manner by the way Rihanna delivered each syllable that made it clear that there was no room for debate. A moment of hesitation passed before Finn acquiesced. He grabbed a plate from the stack of dishes Piers was cleaning and reached into the glass case for a slice of coffee cake. Two dollars was way more than what he'd be willing to spend on a serving when he could just buy an entire coffee cake for maybe a dollar more at the store. But 50% employee discounts were a marvelous thing. By the time he rounded the counter, Kaloa was still hovering around the pickup area and expecting Clint in his eyes. Got a sec to chat? Finn fought against his cheeky grin that threatened to crack through his facade. I suppose I owe my savior a moment of my time. The ever-present smile Kaloa was expanding at that, stretching into the same boyishly lopsided grin as before. They climbed one of the tables furthest from the counter, tucking themselves into a windowed corner that had been cooled by the chilly Ohio weather. The thin white chair creaked beneath Kaloa's enormous body, 
which likely weighed over a couple hundred pounds. Briefly, Finn wondered if it would collapse underneath him until goosebumps up and down his arms and legs as the coal from the wooden seat seeped through the thin fabric of his work pants. He snapped his attention away from the suffering chair into the cup of coffee resting between them on the table. Warm curls of steam rising up from the opening. Damn it, he should have gotten coffee too. You know, it's rather coincidental that you stopped at a privately owned establishment I happen to work at, rather than a coffee chain closer to your work. Just days after you helped me out of a grocery store, don't you think? Isn't that weird? Claude didn't look so much surprised as he did taken aback. Truthfully, Finn couldn't blame him. It was a pretty abrupt change in conversation. If I say yes, will you let me take you out to dinner? This time it was Finn's turn to be thrown off balance. He snorted around a mouthful of coffee cake that proceeded to send a number of fine crumbs flying into his airways. It took nearly an entire minute for Finn to recover, but when he did, Kolo was nearly vibrating with suppressed laughter. Got the hots for me that bad? Finn rolled his eyes. Please, if anything, I'm appalled by the idea of someone speaking so audaciously. Audaciously, you wound me. <laughs> Wiping a tear from the corner of his eye from the choking mishap, Finn leaned back into his chair with his arms folded across his chest. After a short-lived talk in a grocery store parking lot, you came to my place of work and asked me out on a date. How would you describe your behavior? Well, if it makes you feel any better, I honestly had no fucking clue you work here. My sister was talking about this place a few days ago, said you were the only place in town that didn't give her crap for putting oatmeal in her coffee. Who puts oatmeal in their coffee? I want to know. Finn's nose scrunched up. Yes, I quite remember that order. It wasn't just oatmeal that she put into her Americano. The entire order had been a clusterfuck. Just the sheer amount of sugar that was added to the drink through syrup pumps was enough to make Finn, a notorious sugar lover, feel queasy. Kaloa barked out a long laugh and popped the lid off his coffee to add a couple of artificial sweetener packets to it. Trust me, we fell from the same tree, but we are two very different apples. I can see. He waved a hand at the plain beverage between them. How was she even able to drink that? I imagine oatmeal would be difficult to drink through such a small opening in the lid. She eats it with a damn spoon. Are you... No, that actually makes more sense than anything I would have been capable of thinking of. A beat. <laughs> Did you grow up around here? Kolo shook his head and took a sip of his coffee now that it had cooled down somewhat. I grew up in Tonga and moved to Hawaii when I was in my teens. Dad thought it'd be much easier to assimilate us to the states if he picked a state that still held on to his island culture. Did it? Kolo chuckled and shook his head. Not really, no. Island or not, it was still different from what we're used to. He might as well have moved us anywhere else in the country. So, what are you doing in Ohio, the most landlocked state a state can get? Chloe shrugged. My sister goes to Ohio State. She's finishing her bachelor's in biomedical science. Oh. I think she minors in Korean, or maybe Chinese. I don't remember. It's all the same, right? You uprooted yourself and moved across an entire continent for one family member? Well, you must be quite close. For a fleeting moment, Chloe's expression tightened. Overly just so. It was a little complicated. Nina needed me, and I didn't have anything really keeping me where I was. Finn nodded to silently convey his understanding. He was no stranger to complicated situations. I was very honorable of you, Kola. Pink tinge closed cheeks, and he turned his eyes to the steaming coffee. Yeah, well, you know, she's only 24. She's, got the, she's the baby of family. Someone's got to take care of her, you know. Besides, I'm sure you would have done it for anyone in your family. For Parker? Absolutely. His parents... Not so much. Finn was not the forgiving type. Wait. 24 is a baby in your family? Clovis smiled, twisted into something a little confused, but didn't exactly falter. Uh, yeah. I mean, my oldest sibling is Talia, and she's 42. How old are you? 36? Wait, how old are you? Finn twisted his lips to the side and averted his gaze to the garden outside of the shop. Old enough. Kaloa laughed a little at that, leaning forward to rest his elbows on the table. Oh, come on. Finn huffed. Finn, come on. I told you how old I was. A wide, roughened palm stretched over the table so Kaloa could nudge the back of his hand. 
Finn tutted and jabbed his thumb with the fork, none too viciously, but felt his lips start to stretch into an embarrassed grin. You'll tease me. That earned him another chuckle, and Koloa's hand receded to pick up his coffee for a sip. I won't tease you. Fine. Finn jiggled his legs, still refusing to look away from the flowers still flourishing in the cold weather. I'm 22, if you must know. At the confession, Koloa sputtered around his coffee. Several droplets spattered around the table in front of him. Finn and his plate were spared, thank goodness, and he had to set his cup down before he made any more of a mess. He rubbed a hand over his chin, covering his mouth, and was silent for several seconds, oblivious to Finn's disapproving glare. I am a cradle robber. Finn rolled his eyes and used a napkin to dab at his mess. Ridiculous is what you are. Dropping his hand back to the table, Kolo eyed him incredulously. You're really only 22? Finn deadpanned. You just look... Kolo's brow furrowed for a second. You look tired. Way too tired for someone in his 20s. Ah, well, he had a point. I mean, Finn's first years of an adult had hardly been kind to him. And raising a child hadn't done him any favors when it came to his appearance. Expression softening, Finn shrugged and looked back down at his plate, throwing some of the caramel goo around with his fork. A little weight settled in his chest, and the idea of Cole finding him less attractive than Finn found him, but he pushed those thoughts to the side. Anyway, what about you? Are you from here? He nodded slowly, still floating in his own thoughts. In a sense, I was born and raised in Loveland. He carefully carved out a caramel swirl from the coffee cake and tucked it aside for later, already wishing that he had another slice. Meanwhile, Koloa popped the lid back onto his coffee and took another sip. Does that mean you're convinced I'm not a stalker? How do I know you simply didn't visit the cafe when that order was made? However, stalkers are known for elaborate ruses, you know. Finn, come on. Koloa gestured at himself. If I'd have been hanging around, you would have seriously not noticed me. I'm pretty fucking hard to miss. Did he have some kind of quota to meet for swearing? Still, he had a point. It was difficult to overlook someone that appeared to be more than capable of breaking Dwayne Johnson's wrist in an arm wrestling match. With the side of his fork, Finn scraped the brown sugar crumble from the top of his cake and pushed it to the side so he could finish what was left. I suppose you are correct, though that still leaves the question of why you would be so brazen as to ask me out on a date when we haven't spoken more than a word to another. Because you're cute. Finn's only response was a cautious stare, to which Koloa responded to by snickering and shaking his head. I, mean, I don't know. Somehow you just stuck with me, and I kind of want to know what it is. I mean, I'm not the type that likes to waste time beating around the bush, so to speak, so I figured I'd ask and get it out of there. Finn blinked in surprise. He would have been content with the first reason, in that sense that it was easy to believe that he had been asked out on such superficial terms, but to be so blunt about something that went beyond physical attraction caught Finn off guard himself. Finn hated being caught off guard. Do you like breakfast? No, I hate breakfast. Uh, not particularly. Something about eating right after working. Sorry, right after waking up always left him feeling sick to his stomach, probably because his body wasn't accustomed to eating much in general, so he learned not to make a habit of it. Finn did enjoy breakfast foods, though. Does that count? That counts, right? That counts. I tend to eat later in the morning, but yes, I like breakfast. Still struggling to regain his footing, Finn answered just as bluntly. So do I. We should get breakfast sometime. Finn's eyebrows climbed to his hairline. He wasn't sure if he should feel shocked that he was the insistent on the idea, or impressed that Koloa was sticking to his guns, which were very big, by the way. And why, pray tell, should we do that? Because we might have other things than breakfast in common. And if we don't? Oh, if we don't click, we'll at least get to eat some good food before heading our separate ways. The silence fell between them as Finn squashed and rolled the crumbled into the cinnamon glaze that, glaze that he had dissected the rest of the coffee cake for. A date. Finn hadn't been on one of these since high school. Not, not a real one, at least. Part of that, he told himself, was because it was not impossible to schedule any social time around work, household chores, and, of course, Ava. The part that Finn that didn't Part of Finn that didn't buy into his lies knew what it. Oh, sorry, knew that it was mostly due to the fact that he still got spooked by his own shadows. And dates had, you know, implications. As if Kolo were reading his thoughts. Would it make you feel better if we don't call it a date? 
Ben frowned, tapping a finger against the table. Wouldn't you still consider it to be one regardless of whether or not we apply a label to it? Chloe shrugged, broad shoulders rising up only to immediately drop back down in a show of carelessness. Well, you're the only one labeling it. That made Finn pause. Thinking back, yeah, Finn was the one to call it his own offer a date. His teeth sank into the swell of his bottom lip, and he looked back down on the sugary paste he had made. The fact of the matter was, Finn didn't make snap decisions. He had always hated them to the point where he would throw fits about impromptu plans being forced on him when he was a kid. Finn needed information, careful planning, time to assess the invitation, and time to prepare. Maybe he had a problem with control. More time passed, and Finn became more uneasy with the situation. He scooped the caramelly, cinnamony goop into his mouth as thoughts swirled around his head. You, know, you don't have to say yes, you know. If you're trying to come up with an excuse to get out of it, I'm not one of those assholes that can't take no for an answer. That was it, though. Finn didn't want to say no. And perhaps it was due to the fact that Koa wasn't wasting his time with lame pickup lines. Or because everything about him, from his relaxed shoulders to the smile that had yet to falter, seemed so casual and easygoing. Finn could use some easy going in his life. Or maybe it was because Finn was so thirsty that he was risking running off with a stranger just because he was hot. Like some dumbass kid in an episode of Criminal Minds. That's a good show. Kalil must have took his hesitation as silent rejection because he rubbed his palms over his thighs and scooted the chair back to stand up. Okay, well, I'm gonna head out. Wait. Kalil froze, half crouched in front of his seat and sank back into the chair. His smile was gone, but he didn't look annoyed or irritated. He looked curious, if a little confused. Finn glanced at the clock. His break was over. How the hell with it? What could it hurt? Let's do it. Ignoring every one of his baser instincts, Finn reached his hand out over the table with his palm up. Give me your phone. What? He wiggled his fingers a little impatiently. Surely you don't want to have to keep returning here to speak with me. Uh, oh, right, right. He slipped his phone out of his pocket and placed it between them. It was one of those newer models with the huge frame, made even bigger by the thick case that it was purchased with. When Finn picked it up, he was sure it weighed at least half a pound. Here. When Koa took his phone back, Finn couldn't help but let his attention divert to the way his fingers brushed against his by accident. They were rough and textured and so warm. My break is over, so... Koa's smile was softer than before. It was calmer, kinder. I'll call you later. He's not going to call. He's going to have to call. Butterflies returned to continue their storm from earlier. That or anxiety, Finn really couldn't tell. He just hoped that he didn't make it a horrible mistake. Okay, well that's that's the demo for Daddy Lies. Currently on itch.io. In the middle of development by... Senpai Studios, was the name of it? I'm pretty sure that was the name of it. Pretty sure that's what we call it. Yeah, Studio Senpai. Sorry, got it wrong. But yeah, that's the game. And I actually really enjoyed that. That was fun. I'm excited to see more of it. So I'm hoping it comes out soon. And I hope you all have a good day. I hope you all enjoyed the quick look. And take care.